What is up everybody, it is Mike Man WBA here, back with another episode of WWE Draft Wars with Nathan. Aye aye. We are back with another Monday Night Raw. We are into December, it is getting cold. I've no idea where the show is being run, so hopefully it's somewhere down south where it is warm. I'm going to pass you over now to Nathan for Monday Night Raw. Here we go ladies and gentlemen, let's run the show and see what we have in store for you. And it's a hundred... A star, you've not seen one of those so far, have you? A freestyle segment. So the show begins with Kurt Angle stood in the ring and he makes a bold announcement, just like he's bold, but in a different way. And he says that next week we will see the debut of a new show next Wednesday night and it will be WWE Uprising. So we have a little 30-minute B show every week just because I want to have a bit more time to feature the cruiserweights and the women, because I've not got loads of time to develop and feature those divisions. And he says the next week, John Cena will make his first defense of the Intercontinental Championship on that show. And then John Cena comes out and addresses his championship win, because obviously last week in the main event, he defeated Shelton Benjamin in a triple threat with Seth Rollins to win the championship. And we get a 100A star, John Cena created a new catchphrase that will likely boost his ability on the microphone and that is i'm the king of the intercontinents oh, that's the new catchphrase sake. he struggled when going off script but it's still got a 100 a star so there we go suck your mum let's go yeah good start here in utah salt lake city utah at the mavericks how Center. the fuck did you know that in utah because i googled it <laughs> you sad motherfucker Anyway. Up next, we have a 65C where the team of Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins defeat Bobby Roode and Shelton Benjamin in 11 and a half minutes when Roode was pinned with a fast roll-up. So during the match, Dean Ambrose walked away from his shield brethren, Seth Rollins, and Bobby Roode, he had the match won, but it slipped through the cracks. Shelton and Bobby Roode, a little bit of conflict there. Shelton wanted the tag. Roode was like, no, I got this, and all he got was rolled up. Seth Rollins gets the win and your Raw Tag Team Champions survive a non-title match but did they really survive? Find out in the future. They survived but their friendship didn't. The friendship's long dead. Yeah. Just like ours. Yeah, and my soul. Uh, oh. Up next we have a 79B. Dolph Ziggler is stood backstage and he says that Rusev was a fluke at Survivor Series. Rusev beat three people to become the sole survivor and get the big win. Yeah, well, Dolph Ziggler's already done that. And he says that to Kurt Angle. And there's Big Daddy Ruru himself. And he says, you're calling me a fluke? Well, it won't be a fluke when I beat Brock Lesnar at Unforgiven, will it? And it won't be a fluke tonight when I beat your ass one-on-one -on -one in the main event. So Rusev, Dolph Ziggler, our main event tonight. Are you hyped? Are you hyped? Damn right you are. What's next? What's next is a 62C where Mickey James defeats Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks in 12.05, pinning Alexa Bliss with the Mickey DDT. Ooh, would you believe it? So Alexa Bliss and Mickey James, they were on the same page for all the match. They took out Sasha Banks. Alexa wanted a Mickey to lie down for her, and she said, nuh -uh, sister, I ain't like that. And Alexa pushed her and pushed her and slapped her. And then, bang, DDT. And your winner of the match and your number one contender is Mickey James. Mickey versus Rousey at Unforgiven. Probably be a very good match. It would be, yes. Yeah. Mickey James, nice to see you get a push. Uh, we'll ignore that for now. Always skip forward. And then we get a 75B minus where Ronda Rousey is shown backstage. And she says that, Mickey James, you're my challenger. <laughs> well, I say challenger, I really mean victim. Just like Becky Lynch was a victim at Survivor Series, she said I got lucky, I didn't. And if you don't believe me, I'll prove that at Unforgiven. Nobody has taken this championship away from me because nobody can. It's been 11 months and I'm still unbeaten. And I am planning on changing that anytime soon. And she improvised well there throughout the segment. So well done, Rhonda. Have a pat on the back. How, how many months? You deserve it. 11. She debuted at the Rumble. She just didn't compete until WrestleMania. Yeah, good point. I'll give you that. Yep. 
good promo from Ronda as we move on. We then have a 61C where TJP is defeated by Mustafa Ali with a reverse 450. Buddy Murphy, not great at the announce table, but who really cares? Is that a minus a 61C, a good match. What? What's a reverse 450? Is that just the one where they sort of do Imploding it? Imploding 450 splash. Yeah. It's a car with shooting star press a reverse moonsault. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, good match. Sadly, no improvements. No, TJ... not all. all that they cracked out to be. Those improvements, we don't really need them when Mustafa as an open hours pop yeah. in 60s. TJP as a 30-year-old man is not suited to his gamer kid gimmick. What a shame. Yeah, weird that, isn't it? Yeah. We then have a 65C where Seth Rollins is backstage. He has a little interview and he says... Dean Ambrose has cost me a lot. He cost me friendships. He's cost me a lot of my health. He cost me the Intercontinental Championship, and I loved that championship. And I want it back. And who walks on the screen but the Usos? And, he's, and Jim Uso says to Seth, Seth, stop focusing on Dean Ambrose. Hell, stop focusing on the Intercontinental Championship. You want that belt back? That's great. But don't forget about the one around your shoulder the Raw Tag Team titles, because we want that. That championship is going to be ours. You see, we're brothers, but you just called yourself brothers. You lasted a few years and you broke up. You had a little reunion and you broke up. Ten years, we're going strong. Unforgiven, those championships are ours. You can believe that. Oh, is that your reference? Yeah, he, he said the thing that his dying cousin says. Ooh. Oh. I mean, we're all dying. Yeah, Eventually. dying slowly. Sadly, not soon enough for some of us. The Usos did well off script there. As yeah. we push on to the next segment, which is A54 C Minus. If you remember next uh, last week, Nia Jack said that Natalia shouldn't have been on Team Raw. Well, Natalia went, ha ha, motherfucker, and rolled her up tonight in a 54 C Minus. A lot of roll-ups tonight. Yeah. Roll-up city, bitch. Roll-up city, bitch. We then push forward into our next segment, which gets a 79B. Kurt Angle is backstage. He tries to talk some sense into Dean Ambrose, but Dean Ambrose just drops the tag team titles on the floor and walks away. Kurt Angle's like, but mate, you and Seth, you have a tag team title match at Unforgiven. He's like, I don't care. I'm a lunatic. He doesn't have a fringe anymore, though. He does not. No. We then have a 63C where the club defeat the rival, the revival, the in just over 10 minutes when Luke Gallows beats Dash Wild out with the Magic Killer. A solid little tag match there between two of our upper mid-card tag teams. And yeah, yeah, a big win for the club. And the club beat the uh, the rivals, so... Uh... They did a big win yeah. for the club, not so big for the rivals. Yeah. Shame that. New name, yeah. guaranteed. They need new gimmicks. Yeah. That's what they need. Need new facial hair as well. Oh, you bit me in. We then have a 73B minus where Finn Balor beats Mike Canales in six and a half minutes with the Coupe de Gras. Mike but Canales was without Maria there, though, as you can see. I wonder why. Very good hmm. rating from Finn in that match. Let's push forward to find out why. As we have a 64C, Mike Canales is laid out cold on the ground. He's starting to get his breath back, and the lights go out. And when they appear, Bray Wyatt is on the Titan Tron, and he mocks Maria's absence. He says, Mike, you're scared of me. The lights went out in that match, and it cost Mike a possible win. He loses because of Bray. His wife isn't here because of Bray. He's scared of Bray Wyatt. And everyone should be. Except yeah. for Jojo, she's not scared of Bray Wyatt. Or anybody else that's feuded with Bray Wyatt and won. Is Aye. this finally a feud that Bray Wyatt can win? Yeah, I'm trying to pipe Bray Wyatt up here. I'm portraying him as some monster. And you're like, ooh, all he does is lose. Do you know who else loses a lot? Your fucking team at Survivor Series. Let's push forward. No, to be fair, Bray deserves credit. It's got to be the only man who's won a title. 73B minus up winning. next in our semi-main event as Andrade Cien Almas defeats Akira Tozawa in just under eight minutes with a hammerlock DDT, which was spelled incorrectly there. Weird, that. A Weird good spelling. performance for Andrade there. Akira did quite well too, but a very good match there. 
73 B minus. Oh, can you imagine how no, good these guys are going to be in the future? My mic doesn't talk over me as much, hopefully, in the future. Never going to happen. Both men improving in performance skills, which is very good to see. That is then followed up by a 76 B minus. Ronda Rousey's walking through a hallway backstage, and Paul Heyman's there. He slips her a business card. He says a few words to her, and she just laughs and walks away. Because cool guys don't look at business cards, they turn around and then walk away. Both improvised well there. Just couldn't wonder was shit. We then have a 77B now on main event of the evening as Rusev taps out Dolph Ziggler in 12.47 to the accolade. And Rusev there showcasing why he could beat Brock Lesnar. Because let's face it, both do have an amateur wrestling background. Many people have said Dolph Ziggler, the new Brock Lesnar. Yeah, even though they're probably the same age. As then Brock Lesnar lays out Rusev. He beats the shit out of Aiden English. And then what happens? Paul Heyman takes a microphone and he says, You think you can beat my client Brock Lesnar, Rusev? <laughs> you can't beat him. He's going to destroy you. He's a beast. You're just a joke. And that ends the show. The show gets a 79B, better than SmackDown from last week, even though SmackDown did have a better main event. But it didn't have a 100-rated angle to start off the show. Popularity increases in 26 regions. A good little show there. Very consistent. And, yeah, exactly. And let's see what happens after the show. A very good show. Be happy Marty with Skull, drop kicks Tommy End. That's what happens. Look at Chris Roberts in the corner there. Yeah, recently left progress, Chris Roberts. Has he? Yeah, did you not know? Oh. No, he's left. I don't really keep up with the progress refereeing situation, but Apollo Crews has a lot of upside and charisma, and we've heard that every week now. Maybe we'll have to push him. Or maybe happen, he'll just it? lose some more and smile. Smile through the pain. Now, you might see, uh, very quick there, uh, the next show, WWE Talking Smack. Uh, so yeah, so Nathan has his little uprising pay, uh, TV show, which was referenced by Kurt Angle and John Cena. SmackDown is going to have Talking Smack, which will just be a, a little half an hour hour show just beforehand, um, just to get some of our sort of lower guys some screen time. We won't bring you that, but we will reference it when we uh, actually go through the shows themselves. But that is all for this episode. We will see you guys in the next one. See you then. Peace.